a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing great, man. How you been? Oh, great. I really appreciate you and Tommy. You do, do, do great job, great work, and I really appreciate it. I watch you every day. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here, man. Let's go to uh, Sylvia in Tampa. Hey, Sylvia, how you doing? Hey, Tom. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. I want to tell you thank you so much for the advice you gave me on dust yesterday. I exited when you told me, and I made a, I made a healthy profit for, That's awesome. for a very short period. So thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up six, NASDAQ up 30, SPs up four and a half. If we go over to the NASDAQ uh, composite first, what you're going to see, composite goes to a high out here today. Uh, we hit a price point inside the, oops, wrong one. Inside the composite out here, we hit 76.44. The high out here was 76.37. Right now, you're at 76.36. Uh, Volume-wise out here, it is going to be a light volume day. Bottom line, we'll see what the, the uh, composite can bring in. NDX 100 almost made the high. NDX 100 traded to a price point of 71.79. The high is 71.86. Right now, you're at 71.68. If we go and take a look at the NDX 100, the ETF structure for it, the three Qs. Qs up here, 170. 513 and the high is 175.21. Now the queues are dying on the vine and have been dying on the vine. Uh, yesterday we did a volume of 20 million to get 17 right now. That'll probably throw it about 27 million. Bottom line, it's going to need a lot more juice to get up and over that level. Small caps hit another new high out here today. IWM, IWM up 96 cents. 9.5 million shares. And but what, what you do have with the small caps is that they have price spread. Uh, bottom line, price spread, uh, that's pushing uh, up and on out of here. Gold contract. What do we have with the gold contract? Gold contract turnaround. Rejected lower price out here once again. Um, not that we get a huge bid, but bottom line, what we did do is it looks now that what we're going to see is that we're going to go after the... 1315 area, uh, we are at 130170. Anything close over 1298, 40, which we did. That is the low of the high. Bottom line, 251,000 contracts. Now it's going to make another run to see whether it can get back inside the higher range. 1315 is the big number in gold to get it back inside that range. Each and every time we've been up to that number, they basically sell that baby uh, off. Silver. We take a look at the silver market. We have with silver out here. Silver's trading at $16.52. That's up a half a percent. Bottom line, silver is not only in the range. What's intriguing here is that silver just made lug gold higher. Uh, nice move on silver today. You have 71,000 contracts traded. That's big numbers. You know, you're getting to the higher end of the range. Silver looks to me like uh, 1742, which is the swing point from the 19th is game. Notes and bonds. We take a look at the note and bond market. What we have with the note and bond market is this. Notes and bonds rejected lower price yesterday. You're up eight ticks on the 10-year. 1.5 million contracts. Not bad. Bottom line, we'll see whether we get some follow-through. Um, technically, the baby's still set up as a potential ABC structure on the way up. We came off that low 117.30 on the 17th. You go all the way up to the price point of 121.03 with volume behind that move. It was monster volume behind the move. Uh, when we came back down yesterday, we were testing. We had gone up on um, 3.48 million contracts. We tested that yesterday with 1.3 million. That's what you'd like to see inside a test. 
30 year, same type of setup inside the 30 year. 30 year is actually stronger than the 10 year. 30 years up 11 ticks, 253,000 contracts traded. Uh, same type of setup, meaning that you are coming back into the big strength. The strength had uh, 602,000 contracts. We came in there uh, with 261 yesterday. Oil contract, let's take a look at the oil. And of course, this is about as deviant as you get. Uh, Tommy and I were on the air this morning. Uh, bottom line, uh, when you take a look at this uh, oil, uh, this oil was trading at 64.22. Right now, you're at 65.22. Uh, bottom line, you know, uh, news news wise out here, you had that uh, our government uh, was uh, looking for the Saudis to kick in another f a million barrels a day. And uh, bottom line is that uh, what do you get? You get a bounce. You know, so you think you get a million million barrels a day, you think it goes south. Bottom line. Uh, what you do have here is that oil's down off its highs of $72.90. You made a low out here today of a 64.22. Bottom line, I suspect you're going to get a counter trend bounce now. Deviant, yeah, a big time. That's what markets are all about, folks. Some of the higher volume stocks out here in this market. Twitter is going in the S&P 500. Uh, that's up $1.85. I believe that's going to be tomorrow at the close. That's when uh, Twitter will go in. You get uh, GE's up 11 cents. Uh, Snap is up 57 cents. It looks to me like a Snap would it makes sense that Snap is catching a bid because of the aspect of uh, Twitter. You know, yeah, it's catching a bid out there, no doubt. And when you see the the aspect of uh, the type TWTR, if you want to see the type of move that uh, Twitter just did, TWTR, it was basically left for dead about a year ago. And we bring this back, and what you're going to see is that, uh, yeah, so Twitter was $14. Actually, yeah, just about uh, 14 months ago. Uh, $14.20, you're at $39 right now. And bottom line is that uh, what you are going to see now is that at the close, I believe it's at the close tomorrow. Let me just see this. S&P. Mm, I'll get this at the break, but I believe that's going to be, oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's at the close of tomorrow. So uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, so Twitter's going to replace Monsanto. Uh, bottom line is that you are going to see, now what's intriguing here, this is up $1.86 right now. All the funds that have to buy it actually can't buy it until that close tomorrow night, folks. Okay, that's how that shakes out, which is pretty wild when you um, put that together. Inside the NDX 100 today, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. Myelin Pharmaceutical is up 4.6%. You have uh, Intuitive Surgical up 2.9%. Uh, Seagate Technologies up 2.8%. Taken away from it. Liberty Financial is down 4%. Uh, you have uh, Dentist uh, Supply, uh, Serona down 3.4%. Wynn Resorts is off 3.3%. Let's go to Wynn. Wynn's got uh, whacked a couple good times this uh, past week and a half. Yeah, so actually it was yesterday. You know, winds down in four days from 197 to 176. That is one big number. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We had the Dow Industrials right now. They're down 16. NASDAQ is up 27. S&Ps are up 2.5. We're coming right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 17. Nasdaq's up 25. S&P's are up 2.5. Let's go over to the cruise industry. So the cruise industry is basically taking a beating out here today. Uh, we will start. Let's go start. Okay, so you start with Carnival. Carnival's down 265. You're trading $60.68. Now, the first thing, you know, it, ha it had high volume low. So that high volume low wanted to get tested. That's April 10th. Well, bottom line is that that high volume low is getting blown away. And let's put this on a weekly. So we put this on a weekly and you got a total breakdown. Let me put this up. We'll get. So you can, you can take a look. This is going to be serious business for these uh, cruise lines. So what we have here is this, okay? You had a consolidation. June of 2017, bottom line, you're breaking this today and you're breaking it with conviction. So for Carnival, bottom line looks to me like the uh, next stop is down here at 58 bucks. You're at 60. Put this on a monthly for a second. Yeah, well, 55 bucks. 55, that, actually, 50, 55 bucks is game here. You know, this, this baby made uh, highs with light volume, came off those highs with volume. Uh, we take a look at the, uh, let's see, RCC. They're probably all going to look the same. NCHL, uh, uh, NCHL. Oh, excuse me, folks. RCL, thank you. RCL. Oh, this is a nice ABC down. So uh, you got Royal Caribbean. That's blowing away a B point. Your A point on this is 120. Established at the 23rd. Your B point's 103, so you get 17 bucks. Uh, your C is 110, so you're talking uh, $93. This is blowing that away. Let's go look at... Uh, same type of setup. So bring this back. Okay, so on a monthly, yeah, this is a big problem. So on a monthly, I mean, RCL looks like, yeah, we're going to, it wants to get on to test. Oh, this would be a trip. 
This looks like it's going to actually test 64. 85 would be the first place where it'd have um, some support. 85, yeah, actually pretty good support. 85, so what 85 is, 85 is the highs of December of 2014. Also the highs of February 2016, but that's uh, 84 from uh, coming down from 135. So bottom line, that is big numbers. No two ways about that. Um, and we'll see whether that says that just oil's going higher or, in fact, uh, that uh, business in general uh, is, is slacking off. The XLF, let's go look at the financials out here. So the XLF, this has been really weak. Um, bottom line, couldn't catch a bit out here today. You're still in the lower range. Uh, and what we have inside the XLF is you have three high-volume lows. These high-volume lows are going to get tested once again, 26.55. If we look at the largest weighting structure, it's Berkshire Hathaway. And you can see Berkshire Hathaway making its way down. The, the bottom line, the high volume low in Berkshire Hathaway is 189.30. Now we're coming into that, and you are coming into that with a lot lighter volume. So that's something you want, you want to keep your eye on. Uh, we, we came down there last week. We came down to 188.62. Um, and you had volume once again. We had volume there, 8.9 million. Today you're coming down with two. It looks to me like you're going to go test that baby. We take this and put this on a monthly. You're going to see that this has been a five-month consolidation. The danger, the danger in this, though, is that you did have volume off the high. So we'll see where that baby shakes out. The XLE, we take a look at the um, oil and gas equities. Bottom line, they're backing down. Uh, and is, the longer they stand at $78.39, because it basically gave it up with volume, uh, the more probability is that you're going to get down to $72.64. Gold, con well, let's see. Let's go into the GDX. We take a look at the GDX. Bottom line, uh, what we did have out here today is that gold contract saved itself. Equities have been all right compared to where the, the price of gold actually was. But we need volume inside the GDX. Right now, you get 13 million shares traded. Now, it's going to be better than yesterday. But yesterday, we did 14 million. But the GDX needs a good, like, we're talking 45, 50 million to really basically have a nice sign of strength. Now, we will see coming into the close, uh, I do expect you are going to see, they'll put another 10 million in. But on a day like today, I don't think you can see a lot more than that. XAU, XAU not bad, up 560. No, one second. XAU is trading up uh, 95 cents. This is a decent setup. This is a, Now, the XAU is getting to the higher end of its consolidation, so I like that because uh, you're going to go be testing out this 84.49 area. Right now, you're at 83.13. The Gold Bugs Index is the baby that needs a big boost up here. Uh, the Gold Bugs Index has been a laggard behind the XAU. Decent move out here today. Uh, one up not dollar ninety four. You're at one seventy eight eighty eight. Uh, that's also come to the higher range. So uh, we're early in the week right now for this uh, for these equities to start making a run. If we do go to the dollar index, we take a look at the dollar that correlation, the inverse correlation. Uh, dollar had a dynamite failure out here today. This is what we did. We went into 35,000 contracts. We have done 20,000, and you've given it up on price. So it's a big number, man. Actually, we went to 37,000. We did 20,000. You get to a price point of 94, 295. Give it up. Bottom line, this is going to be, let me see this. Yeah, this is going to, this is going to set up to try to get back inside 93,480. Now, if that's what we see happen, folks, you are going to see one fast acceleration uh, down on the U.S. dollar. The reason being is that we've been outside of this now a good three, three and a half weeks. Um, this will be a major failure uh, on price, on volume. And what you have on top of that is that the... On a longer, so that's on the shorter basis. On a longer term basis, the bottom line is that this was only a small counter trend bounce. You know, we had gone straight down from 103 in January of 2017, down to a price point of 88. 
And if this is the only bounce that, uh, the, that the dollar could actually get going after a year and a half, it will be pretty wild because what we did do, uh, we got just over a 0.382 retracement, but right now you're back under it ASAP. That is the basis for basically a dead cat bounce. That's how that shakes out. Um, yeah, when the resorts, let's go look at Las Vegas, LVS. Uh, wind's getting smoked. Um, Las Vegas sands, it's down a buck. Not, nothing like wind, so there's something else that's going on uh, inside of wind. Some of the uh, high up. Stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials right now. Whoops. Dow Industrial is down 29, NASDAQ up 21, S&P is up 1.5. Come right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank as a member FDIC and equal housing lender. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow Industrials are down 20. You get the NASDAQ up 23. S&Ps are up 2. Uh, let's go over and take a look at the uh, SPY first uh, inside the uh, S&P. So, uh, SPY out here today, uh, up nine cents right now. Bottom line is that uh, to get a failure in this, well, there's a couple ways, different ways to look at it. Um, the, the the big failure would be, uh, which we're not going to, I don't, well, it's hard to say, no, I don't think we're going to get it. Uh, it'll be 275, 274.25. Yeah, 274.25. You close under that, bottom line, you get a failure. Uh, I, I do see it backing off here. Uh, what the SPY is doing, it, folks, is this. 
So pitch up. January 26th, that's been the high in the S&P, high in the Dow Industrials. $286.62. Now, we came off that level, 173 million shares, 294 million. You make a low, which that's the infamous low that wants to be tested, February 9th, 252.92. Make a huge counter trend bounce, you go up to 280. Now we're in the month of March. So February, beginning of February, you come down hard. Beginning of March, middle of March, same deal. Monster volume at these levels. Um, and that's what this is going into. That's the supply line that it's trying to get into right now. Uh, and I suspect, guess what? I, I, I don't suspect we're going to make it. I think this is basically it inside the spy. And more than likely what you're going to see, let's go over the Dow Industrials. This is where the whole issue will come in with the tariffs. Um, these much larger companies, these are the ones that this thing's going to come out of nowhere and give them a good whacking. So the Dow Industrials, same type of setup inside the Dow. What you have with the Dow is this. Um, the February 9th time frame was a disaster. That's when we went from 25,000 to 20, uh, 4,000, 25,500, down 1,400 points. Uh, the Dow hasn't even been able to basically get up uh, into the uh, March levels, you know, slightly. Bottom line, um, this is much weaker. Has, it's not near its a swing point. Uh, if we go look at the diamonds and we take a look at that setup inside the diamonds, what you're going to see, uh, diamonds right now, 2.2 million shares. You're going against 19 million. You're going against 6.2 million. There's just not enough uh, juice uh, inside of these. And so if we do go look inside the Dow Industrials, uh, well, actually, I, I want to go to Goldman Sachs first. So gold, Goldman, folks, has continued to lead the financials lower. Uh, it's only down a buck fifty-two today. But when we when we talk about the February 9th swing low, the February 9th swing low in Goldman is two hundred and thirty-nine dollars. We're at two twenty-eight. It's ten dollars below that level. Um, if we take a look at the weeklies, what you're going to see is that Goldman Sachs is all the way back over to December of 2016. Huge consolidation, and then what do you get? You get volume off the high in the consolidation. We made a high the first time we made in February of 2018. You did it with 20 million shares. You come off that high with 27. You make another high with 14. You come off that with 14. Then you come off that with 24. Then last month, we basically did 17. So what's the next step? Next step, folks. You're going to get into 205. If you break 205, this is where Goldman had a huge sign of strength in November of 2016. Uh, bottom line is that that's when Goldman went from a price point of 178 to 205. Guess what? You, if you get into 205, let's say we go to 200, bang, 178 is gain because you're too far into that bar. That's how that uh, baby is shaken out. Uh, Amazon. Let's go take a look at Amazon. Amazon was hitting all-time highs out here this morning. Amazon right now still at all-time highs, up 29 bucks, trading $1,695. We go over to Google, take a look at Google. Not bad. Google's flat, 11.38. Apple. Now it's intriguing here. Is that look at this? Apple's. All-time highs, 193, flat, Microsoft. What this is telling you is that the internals of the NVX 100 are basically weak because what we have is that each and every one of these are up at highs, folks. And the NVX bottom line is at highs, but guess what? This baby should be firing up in spades big time. So the uh, Microsoft at an all-time high, 102. We go to Facebook. We take a look at Facebook. Facebook, all-time high. NVIDIA, NVDA. All-time high. Netflix, NFLX. You can, you can imagine what's intriguing here. Um, and Netflix caught quite a bit, too, because Netflix, I believe, is going on the S&P 100. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Twitter joins the S&P 500, Netflix joins the S&P 100. In both cases, 
uh, it puts a lot more juice underneath that stock. Uh, Regenerous, uh, oh, let's see. What happened with this one? I'm not sure. Walmart. Let's go over to Walmart and see what Walmart's doing. So, yeah, Walmart's having a hard, still having a hard time catching a bid. 109 was the high. 84 degree, 84 right now. And if we bring this back. Yeah, Walmart, yep, is inside its lower range. So you had a nice break top side. You made a high on a monthly basis with 169 million. Now check this out. High with 169 million, you come off the high with 307 million. Walmart's going lower. Yep, that's where this baby is set up. If we do look at uh, the Fed fund future rate still as to where they stand right now, our effective rate is still 1.7. And your probability goes out to September now. September 26th is a 61% chance that we go up another 25 basis points. We'll see how that shakes out. If we go over to the TLT, the reason I'm saying we'll see where that shakes out is that the bond market the note market, the 20 year plus bond market, their bottom, they, they're not giving it up. You know, the TLT basically is flat today. It's up 36 cents, but it's basically flat. And, you know, this had a huge run top side too. It broke a swing point, it broke the swing point from April, broke it with volume. We did uh, 21 million versus 12 million. That's gonna go up there at least test it. You know, 122.33. 122.52. So it did break the swing. When you break, when you break a swing, folks. So picture this: when you try to make a bottom, if you go up and you don't hit the swing, and then it gives it up, even with an expansion of volume, that's a problem. When you go up as the TLT did, you break the swing from the second of April. You broke it with volume. You had price spread behind the move. We're back down with lighter volume. Wants higher price. Deviant, man. It's deviant. There's no doubt, but. Guess what? It wants higher price. Gold is actually telling us that, too, because gold started moving out of nowhere today. Dow Industrials right now are down 12. NASDAQ is up 25. S&Ps are up 3. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. 
Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now uh, is down 25. NASDAQ's up 23. S&Ps are up about one and a half. Now, this is uh, going to get intriguing here to see uh, how this shakes out in the next eight weeks. And this will affect uh, not just the United Parcel, but it's going to affect... Uh, I suspect Amazon and a lot of the internet companies. So uh, UPS work is expected to give blessing to a summer strike if needed. Uh, United Parcel workers are expected to authorize the union to call a strike if necessary, given negotiations more leverage and talks to replace a labor contract that expires at the end of July. The results from the union vote are expected late uh, today, according to the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. A strike authorization is common in during negotiations to put pressure on the company. Uh, UPS is confident in our ability to reach an agreement that meets the needs of our employees and the business. The labor talks are proceeding amid discussions on pay and work schedules as UPS looks to increase warehouse automation to keep up with surging demand from e-commerce shipments. The union has proposed increasing the part-time starting wage as well as improving the overall wage structure. Union leaders urge support for struck authorization in a letter uh, dated May 15th and signed by uh, James P. Hoffett, president of the Teamsters, uh, and Dennis Taylor. Uh, no one wants to, this is, uh, let's see, who's, uh, this is uh, Hoffa's quote. Uh, no one wants to strike. It hurts the company, hurts the members. They said in the letter, however, the ability to strike is necessary in order to assure a timely and positive conclusion to the negotiations. Um, voting began in the middle of last month, included June 3rd. Uh, 260,000 workers are covered uh, under this employment contract. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, let me see how this, this is shaking out. This is, you know, it's wild about this. Think about it. You know, a UPS strike in general is always a problem. <laughs> a UPS strike in this day and age uh, is really going to be amazing because for the amount of Merchandise that gets, I mean, our whole business, not our whole, well, no, a huge part of our economy right now is delivery. So UPS is off a high of 135 bucks, down with vicious volume. You do a counter trend bounce with light volume. Yeah, this doesn't, let me put this on a monthly for a second. Whoops. So on a monthly, yeah, and a monthly has got a problem too. You're off the high with volume. Made a high with 135 million, 79 million shares. We come off the high with 131 million. We tested last month with 67. So the high, 79. It tries to test the low of the high. Last month doesn't do it. Let's go look at FDX and see what the difference is. FedEx. Yeah, different, you know, it's, yeah, FedEx has a different chart. 
Bottom line, you're at 252. Stock in 2009 is $43. Imagine that, pretty amazing. Um, FedEx is definitely a different shot. So we'll see where that whole thing's going to shake out the closer that we get to. So we'll hear a, quite a bit about that tomorrow. Um, they'll confirm that at the end of today, Tuesday, that they have the vote to go for it. And then the real kick, kick is going to be, okay, what uh, is the number? And then what kind of upcharges can UPS do in order to pay uh, that, many, that many employees? Because when we take a look at it, let's see. UPS has... 455,000 employees, man, that's amazing. FedEx has 345,000, 343,000. Huge numbers, huge numbers right across uh, the pond in a big way. Um, let's go take a look at Kamiko, a CCJ. So a Kamiko, whoops, a CCJ. Okay, so Kamiko's up 43 cents today, $11.38. What this is about is Kakistan came out this morning and said they're going to basically slow down production until the price of uranium goes higher. And this caught a nice bid, man. This, uh, this very well could end up being an ABC up. You know, it, it, had, caught, it had caught, the first bid that it caught was uh, the 16th of April. Takes a bid then, that's a, an ABC up. So that was uh, nine, yeah, that's about a dollar ABC up, which gave you 1080. Then it gets up to 11.67 with volume, backs down with light volume. You get one more day like this. Let me see where this back this uh, down, because this stock could get killed. Yeah, th this stock has a high volume high at 13.36, man. It's going to go after it. Yep, let me pull this back a little bit further. Yeah, this is starting to get some juice. So 1336 is game. You're 1139. Then we'll see whether it can get back inside the higher range. This is still the lower range. This the stock had broken down and broken down pretty good. But bottom line is that uh, if they start squeezing, they're coming out with their numbers on the 27th of July. If they start squeezing the supplies and they can get the actual price up, bottom line is that uh, uranium's just like taking sugar out of a mine, folks, okay? It comes out by the scoopful. Uh, bottom line is that uh, Kamiko does have a very large, large mine, huge mine. Let's go over and take a look at uh, Inico Eagle, AEM. So uh, AEM, let's trade in flat out here today. Now, this thing is building cars to try to get up into this high volume high of uh, the 25th of January, which is... 49. Gold Corp. Same deal. I'd like to see a little more volume in Gold Corp right now. We have 2.6 million. This has a high volume high of 1557. Royal Gold. So Royal, let's see what Royal is happening because Royal, wow, this is good. Okay, so Royal's trying to basically get up and over its high. Uh, the high we're talking about here is $91 and um, 51 cents. We go to Great Panther. We take a look at Great Panther. Sideways move. Was lower today. Uh, 292,000 shares. Rejected the low. Um, Vista Gold, VGZ. Now this is, so this Vista and Great Panther seem to trade somewhat the same. And that doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, but I, I trade both of them a lot. And what happens is this, is that Great Panther, you know, is a producer. Vista is not a producer. Uh, Vista, bottom line, has, uh, you know, good amount of bread. They get like $65 million in cash. They're an uh, exploration stock. They get a huge thing in Mount Todd. Now, I was really worried about Vista, actually, the last couple of days. The reason being is that with not much going on, you know, Vista, what Vista does have, when it broke topside, it broke topside at 66 cents. Now, you're at 69. That might not sound a lot, but guess what? For 69 cents stock, three cents is a lot. That being said, uh, this is a good number, what happened out here today. It rejected uh, 68. You're at 69, almost 70. And, you know, it looks like all it wanted to do is go into that 68, which was the 19th 
of, of March. So bottom line, that looks like it wants higher price also. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow Industrials down six. Nasdaq up 29. s and is up three and a half. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget. You can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We take a look at some of the volumes out here inside the NYSE. You're at 5.30, so that'll come in about 7.50, We take a look at the uh, composite, the NASDAQ composite. That's at 1.7. Now, it's going to get intriguing here with the composite is this. So the, so the composite hits all-time highs today. Uh, we The all-time all -time high that we are talking about, let's get this baby up. Okay, is gets over the high of 76.37. Uh, we hit 76.44. Bottom line, uh, it's going to be so wild if... It just closes underneath by a point. You know, that would be a failure. That's the, that's the bottom line. Uh, well, we'll have to pull that back and see what the volume is on the 13th. Well, there you go. Now, they're going to get it over. They're going to close it over. Right now, uh, oh, let's go. We'll go look at the volume on the 13th anyway. So March 13th, that's what we're looking for. That's the first high that we had up there. And, that, and that's the day that we gave it up on spades, by the way. Uh, you hit a new all-time high. You came off that high, and it was a vicious way of coming off the high. March 13th, yeah. Uh, so bottom line is that we'll see whether you can get priced. You're not going to get the volume. The volume on the March 13th 
was 2.4 billion shares. So depending where we close out here, where, where that last print comes, uh, that'll, that'll make a huge difference. And right now, it uh, looks like uh, that last print, they want to goose it uh, coming into the close. Right now, you have the Dow Industrials down six, uh, NASDAQ uh, up 31, S&Ps up uh, four. Uh, it's the Dow Industrials and the S&Ps, folks, that are the weak laggards here in a huge way. NDX 100 wants that high. NASDAQ looks like it's going to close at highs. Um, IWM not only closing at highs, the, the Russell not even closing at highs. What you have inside the Russell is that you actually have price spread inside the Russell. Um, and pretty good price spread. You're up $8.49. You're at 1661 Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back with some numbers after the close. We have the uh, Dow Industrials down 8, NASDAQ up 31, S&Ps up 3.5. Coming right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Oh, oh it's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taking it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. Yeah. But Holy commo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the inter internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever. You focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials down 13, NASDAQ up 31, all time highs. That's the composite. SPs up five. Gold contract up $3.50, trading at a price point of $1,380. Silver up seven cents, $16.50 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 61 cents, $65.36 a barrel. We'll have those API numbers out at 4.30 this afternoon. Notes and bonds, a 10-year note up 7 ticks, 119.23. 30-year bond up 9 ticks, 143.17. Now, both notes and bonds, they had rejected lower price yesterday. They got back into where they had their strength. Bottom line, get some t upside potential. We said upside price out here today. Volume's not bad. We'll see whether we get some follow through. They both are in potential ABC structures on the way up. King dollar. King dollar down 111 ticks, trading 93,875. We're going to start with King dollar because you get a major failure out here, folks. So, King dollar's been on quite a run. Uh, King dollar, we bring this back. We bring this back to April 17th. King dollar was trading at 88.945. Uh, it had 
won the takeout, which it did. The December 12th swing high, 93.480. What do we do? You get up to higher, higher highs. Bottom line, you know, when we actually took the swing point out, it didn't take it out with that much juice. We were pushing the high, we were pushing the high with good volume. Didn't take it out with that much. Got higher and had some decent volume up at the high. That being said, you came off the high with volume. Today was a big day. Why? Because yesterday what we had done is this. Yesterday you came back into its strength, dramatically lighter volume. We did 16,700 contracts, which was coming into 37,000 contracts. So you rejected it. That's saying it's going to bounce. You did the bounce, and this is what we did. This is where the failure comes. We got to 94,295. The low of the high is 94,235. So what we did is this. Your correlation is you have 20,000 contracts. You go into the low of the high. You reject it, and then you give it up on price. And we gave it up quite extensively on price. We finished out near the low. So what I expect you're going to see is this. Good old King Dollar is going to see if it can get back inside its lower range. Now, it's not going to take much to do that because when we're talking about the lower range right here, uh, we're talking about, uh, what, 400 points. That's it. Um, 400 ticks. Um, it's going to go for it. The real question is, does it get back inside it? If, in fact, we get back inside it and you have volume, this is how you want to be looking at this. When you break out of ranges or break back inside ranges if you do that with volume on the break top side uh if you break let's say the break top side first you have volume and price spread your probability is much higher you're going to keep going when you do a failure after you've broken out of a range it can come back inside the range it happens a lot the difference is if you come back inside that range with conviction Conviction would be wide price spread, accelerated volume. You do that, bottom line. When we put this on a continuous contract, you'll see that that was a dead cat bounce inside the dollar index. And then what is game out here and is still game uh, is pretty dramatic because if we take this and we put this on a continuous contract, what you're going to see, put this on a big monthly contract, what you're going to see is that we had come down off the uh, 103. Bottom line, uh, when we got to the 88, what was saving the good old King dollar, the 88 mark, that was the highs of 2008 as well as the highs of 2010. So your first setup, if you get a failure, would be it would get back to the low, which is 88,150. The real question is going to be, uh, does it break that low and does it have volume on the break? And do we have a monster ABC structure on the way down? Because if that's what you have happening out here, you'd have about, uh, what is that, 12, about a 15.8 A to B. And that would set up about an $80. Uh, dollar. And what does happen is that, um, let's see, yeah, you get your swing lows from May of 2014 are laying out at 80 bucks. So you're gonna, we're going to get a lot of movement out here. The real question is going to be, uh, that, does that movement uh, bring you back inside the lower range? And if that's what you get, then what you're going to see is you're going to see this gold contract take off um, in a big way. What we did have with gold out here today, uh, basically it saved itself, didn't jump off the cliff. Uh, it was coming to the bottom of this consolidation. You know, the bottom line is that uh, the actual physical metal uh, basically has been going down since, let's see, the last high out here was April uh, 11th. April 11th to 13.75. Uh, we hit a low on uh, March, on May 21st at 12.86. And it had every chance today to basically get into that 12.86. It rejected the high of the low. So that rejection of the high of the low now is saying that, okay, gold contract is going to try to get back inside the higher range. That number is 1315 and each time that we get up into that number uh what you do have is this is that as you try to get up into that number you have sellers uh each and every time there so we'll see uh, how that shakes out if we go take a look at the gdx gdx was up 16 cents out here today 
And uh, baby, this this is held up really well. What's going to get in intriguing about the GDX is that uh, what we what we have done is that we're just barely at the 50 and 100 moving average. It's been trying to get over this level um, for you know about seven or eight days. Hasn't quite made it yet. Uh, if we we get a nice pop tomorrow, you get over that level, that would turn around and put it on a few uh, more than a few basically computers uh, that are in the trending market. Because so what ends up happening is that uh, trend followers, folks, they but they like those moving averages. That's the bottom line. They'll pop up in their computers and then they'll decide to buy it. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have the Dow Industrials. They finished down 13. NASDAQ up 31. All-time highs. S&P's up 6.5. Come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. So we have the, uh, the Dow finished down uh, 13. NASDAQ up uh, 31. S&P is up 6. You know, yesterday I was talking about Goldman had come out with a, a note, one of the analysts at Goldman come out with a note, uh, that the FANG stocks uh, basically was different this time uh, because of the fact that technology is so important. And was, they were basically arguing that the FANG stocks are not in a bubble compared to uh, the 2000 era. Uh, listen to this number, though. This number just came across um, the Bloomberg, and this is in in intriguing. Uh, boom, bust, boom. Uh, NASDAQ's market cap relative to the S&P 500 has surpassed 
the dot-com era levels. Now, check this out. There's not just the market cap of the NASDAQ. What it is is that what is inside this baby. So the collective dominance of the fangs, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, um, has pushed the NASDAQ composite uh, closer to the S&P index on at least one measure. A ratio of the technology's index market capitalization to that of the S&P sits at 49%. That's a full percentage point more than the previous high, which was set in the summer of 2000 during the dot-com boom. The fangs, which are up an average of 30% this year, account for more than one quarter of the NASDAQ compared to just 13% share of the S&P 500. Pretty wild, man. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Andy Heck, as you do each and every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, Andy's got a great show here at TFNN, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday, Thursday. He also has two great newsletters. He has the Technomental Commodity Report. That is his weekly newsletter. He has the Daily Essentials. That is his daily newsletter. You can come over to our website at TFNN. Take a look at both of them. They both come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check them out right here, right now. Andy Heck, what's going on? How you doing, Tom? Good, man. I'm feeling Good. for you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get these guys going Thursday. Oh, nah, I had to, this is a problem. <laughs> This is a problem. Doesn't look good, but we'll see. We'll see what hey, happens. No, listen. Uh, Washington's you know, been totally dominate, dominating. And you know what? I, it just feels like they kind of ran into um, – they kind of ran in – they picked the wrong time of the season to uh, to go flat. They, they, they kind of played flat the last three games, in my opinion. Well, I'll tell you, we'll Tom, when, when we were doing the show this morning, Tommy showed me a scale um, and – and what the scale was, folks, is this. In certain sports, when you're down three to one, what the probability is that you can come back. And in, in hockey, um, teams have come back 28 times. Doesn't mean they've yeah, no, won. No, I know it's possible. I know it's yeah. possible. But so, uh, listen, uh, Washington is Washington just continued to oh, play they're good. like they're they just, did against Tampa. I mean, they've yeah. been dominant. Really no, they're tough. Good. They're good. They're good in they there. You, they're, they're both teams are hitting. You know, the bottom line is that last night, you know, I'm, I'm glad they stopped breaking it up, man, because it would have been like Muhammad Ali and George Fraser in there, man. They, they, oh, they I know. Well, you know, the, the, the Knights were frustrated. They hit a lot of crossbars in the first period. And, yeah. you know, things. sometimes the puck has eyes and sometimes it's blind. The puck has had <laughs> eyes for Washington. It's been blind for the Knights, no question. Yeah. No so, doubt. yeah, no we'll doubt. see what happens Thursday. It'll be entertaining, yep. no question about it. The third period last night was entertaining, no question about oh, that. I thought, yeah, yeah. No, listen, I thought the whole thing was good. You know, it's, yeah. it's, good. it's good hockey. That's the bottom line. It's great hockey. I mean, this is always Stanley Cup, always the best, right? Amazing, amazing. So, anyway, so in these markets, eh, not, you know, not a lot going on. So oil went down to a new low today, but I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking that uh, oil's going to hold this 6258 in my opinion. Too many too many things in the oil market. Uh, 6258 was the level we broke on the upside. Uh, so that becomes the technical support. Oil is way oversold. Open interest is coming down. That's not necessarily bearish for the oil market. You know, all of the bearish news is kind of in the market. But the crack spreads continue to hold up. You know, you got the, the gasoline crack at around 23 bucks, the heating oil crack at over $24. You know, that's all kind of supportive of the price of oil. The Brent uh, premium, it moved to $11.5. I mean, it's down now to about nine seventy, but this is still very high levels for Brent uh, versus WTI. Uh, you know, I can't see oil just, you know, falling, uh, you know, below 60 here. But we'll, well, we'll you see. know, it's interesting. And, 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 you know, you saw that, you know, the, the government wanted Saudis to release another million barrels. Right. And, right. and what happens here, this is what that is about as devious as it can get. As soon as I heard that, I said, oh, oil's going up now. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. like, you know what I mean? And, and it is the opposite, folks, of what you think on a fundamental basis. But listen, governments... All, they're always way behind. Oil just went from 72 to 62. So, you know, right. bottom line right. is that most of the time when that news comes out, then great, you get the bounce. You know what I mean? It's right. Like, okay. Exactly. So we'll see what happens there. Um, another interesting market today was cocoa, which filled the gap on the weekly chart. And I'm starting to like that now. I mean, that thing has fallen from 29, uh, over 2,900 down to under 2,300. 
uh, over the last, since April 30th. So a month and a, and a bit here, a month and a week. Uh, but we filled this big gap on the weekly chart. Gaps love to get filled. And, um, you know, I'm thinking we're going to get some, uh, some um, uh, support here in the cocoa market after that technical move. But we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, gold, eh, sleep at 1300 Asleep at the wheel, right? Yeah. Sleep at the um, wheel. Well, listen, uh, I, I, I'm glad I didn't jump off the cliff today. I mean, that thing could have went after that swing low, that uh, 1286 uh, number, and we could have broke yeah, it. Yeah, but you know, it, I mean? you know what? The dollar's not, you know, the dollar is uh, down below 94 now. Uh, on the dollar index, uh, gold likes oh, yeah, to fall. Oh, yeah, hey, listen, we got, a failure, we got a failure in the dollar index today. We'll see if it can get back inside the range. I expect Well, it's we'll gonna... see. I, I think that the dollar and all these markets now are in wait-and-see mode for June 13th when the FOMC announces their decision on rates. Gold tends to go into those decisions on the defensive, and it tends to have a relief rally after. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, well, and the, last, last week's that, action— that, the 13th, I mean, there's only an 18% chance right now. So I, I don't, you know, the Fed of, fund of futures. Of a rate hike? Yeah, that's what it's saying. Yeah, you know what? I think they're going to raise rates by 25 basis points. I think the that'll build. The 13th, maybe I'm reading this wrong. One second. Maybe it says 80%. I got to look at this I think it's again. 87%. <laughs> yeah, it's 82%, I guess. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it, likely they're going to do it. No question. But that we won't get a fourth rate hike. You know, one of the interesting things... I wanted to point out to you and the listeners, um, you know, last Tuesday, it's like fading in the rear view mirror, but Italy, you know, hit the skids sure. and um, it affected our markets. And, and that's not gone away. But let's compare the action in JP Morgan stock to Deutsche Bank stock. And, and that is a, a something that we need to concentrate on because the chance of risk off. Look, Deutsche Bank is too big to fail, but it's not too big to fall. You know what right. I mean? Right. And the, Fe the Fed stress tests didn't like what they saw in Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is chock-a-block with uh, European debt. And, you know, what happened in Italy to, to not think that we're not going to get some contagion in Spain, in Portugal, in Greece, and in um, uh, the European banking fin uh, financial institutions would be kind of naive here. Um, this is a real, this is another reminder of the cultural financial difference between uh, the Mediterranean and the rest of Europe. Hey, stay right there. Andy and I are going to be coming right back, folks. Uh, our phone number is 877-927-6648. Andy and I are coming right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, 
the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Talk with our man, Mr. Andy Heck. We are talking markets. We're talking uh, commodities. And when these uh, API numbers do come out, folks, we will get them for you uh, coming across the tape. And let's see if we have any right now. Not Always yet. a little delayed. Always yeah. a little delayed. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, that'll that'll uh, do a lot to to move um, um, the crude oil here, which yes. is looking for direction at the moment. Um, but um, going back to what I was saying about Europe, um, you know, last Tuesday was a reminder that things are not that easy. That cultural divide is big. Um, the political parties that are anti-euro, anti-EU are gaining some strength. And um, if there's another election forced in Italy, it will be a referendum on the uh, euro currency, and it could cause a lot of volatility in markets. Yeah. Oh, listen, that's no doubt. I don't know what they're going to go back to. You know, it, it what's wild is that I, all of these countries actually, it, it'd be wild if the euro actually does break up, because what would happen is that when you look at, I mean, Italy never had a strong currency. Uh, no. Bottom line is that, no, you know, that. There's, there's so much corruption. There's so much um, uh, bureaucracy. Uh, they, they, they vote. But what they've been able to do is to, you know, they've had the free hand to kind of stimulate the economony by running the printing presses. No, but that's what I'm Euro, saying, right. The I euro, mean, they it, can't do it. No, it, it basically, by the bottom line, what they did do, well, what they did with the Euro, Euro is that they, they still got a huge amount of debt. There's a, there's a, there's a level... But they had it with a stronger currency, so they still live in the life of luxuries. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. Well, they depend on tourism. And, and the problem is that their economy has been very stagnant, and voters are not liking that. So, you know, the voters, they, they want to go back to, to what, what the memories of yesteryear, but they don't remember necessarily the problems of yesteryear. So, listen— the bottom line is that the voters vote with their pocketbooks, their immediate pocketbooks and problems, and we could see a lot of volatility. <clears throat> and that could put a lot of, you know, cause a lot of contagion in financial institutions yeah. that hold okay. debt of these countries. So we got to keep that, you know, we got to keep one eye on the situation in Europe because. You know, the way Italy goes is definitely the way Spain goes, Portugal goes, Greece goes. And um, the ECB and the EU will be going run, running from fire to fire at a time where they're still at negative 40 basis points and still buying uh, government debt. So, you know, they're way, way, way behind the U.S. here. And, and all of the pressure on the ECB to, to reverse course because economic conditions are slightly better, you know, they, they just can't do it. Their hands are tied. Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. It really is. It's, it's, it's it is wild. And you know, and then and then you put put trade issues on top of that here in the U.S. with China and with Europe and with Canada and Mexico, and you know, you got a potent cocktail for lots of volatility in markets. 
No, there's, there's no doubt. What's intriguing, like uh, yesterday, I was, you know, let's pitch it. Okay, the markets are at all time highs. The bottom line is that, you know, I haven't seen any stocks yet really get dislocated. So it's almost like you get the rhetoric of the, uh, we're going to have basically a huge trade war, but the markets haven't said it yet. Which is no. really intriguing. Do you know what I mean? They just have the markets it, are know? assuming deals get done. They really are, uh, yeah. in my mind. And hey, that's quite possible. But you know, <laughs> oh no, listen, I know. Not a lot I, of I, happy, I, there's not a lot of happy people in Canada, Mexico when it comes to the leaders, the EU, oh, China no these days with the U.S. And um, well, you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if it's going to be like a lot of the smaller companies that just get hit that basically aren't public. That's where. You know, and then you'll just have a social unrest, which yeah, we'll well, that's possible. Who knows? No. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But right now, I mean, the markets are betting on deals getting done. That is the bottom line. Right. Uh, that, that's right. a big no. bet. When I'm looking at the Dow Jones at twenty four thousand eight hundred, the Nasdaq at a new high over uh, seventy six hundred, the S and P up at twenty seven fifty. These markets are making a big bet, and that bet is that uh, Trump gets some deals done. So we'll see if the markets are right. Yeah. The market well, price yeah. is always right at the moment. When, <laughs> and I, I'm with you. Like, if we look at the small caps, right, the small caps bottom got wide price spread today. It's way over its highs. So the small caps, basically, this is where the divergent was come in. They would get less hurt because a lot of these small caps, basically USA stocks, they're not depending on huge amount of exports where the S&P can't get any traction. So the other right. side of that is that, okay, we haven't seen destruction, but it just can't get going. So Right, it can't get going, certainly. The other thing that's really interesting to me today, really interesting in this environment, Tom, is that copper is up over 320 a pound on huge volume today. Oh yeah, let's look at that. That's uh I mean that's that's an interesting one to me because you know in this environment um, oh, this is a beauty. I like I'm kind it. of surprised and and I'll tell you, I do like copper here and I do think it's going to make a run for the highs because I think the economic demand uh, uh, for, for, for infrastructure building around the world continues to be good and the fact that the Chinese are, are limiting, smelting and refining to cut pollution means they'll be importing more copper from around the world as well as other base metals and the bottom line there is the fundamentals for the copper market look good, but they are not reflecting these tariffs, nor are they reflecting Europe. Uh, they are ignoring them. Yeah, so check this out. Z was asking me about this earlier, too, and this is pretty cool. So 247, you get 50, you get 80 cents. Man, this can be a monster ABC up to 480. Four Let me pull yeah. this back. Uh no, this, this, this looks okay to me. And you know what? Copper went up today on a day yesterday. Met, uh, stocks went up. Inventories went up to 315,000 metric tons. I mean, you know, that's a decent move from last year, last week's level at, uh, you know, two, yeah. 290 or so. A lot, of, a lot of tonnage coming into win inventories. That usually weighs on the price, but not the case. And the dollar is not that far off the highs. So copper has got kind of a mind of its own, right? Uh, this is good, man. I Listen, I like how this is set up. This looks to me like we're going to these highs, man. You know, if that's an ABC up, it's saying it's gonna it's gonna bust through 464, which is the high. That'd that, be a mind that's, blower. That's a a, a massive, massive right. uh, bullish signal for commodities. Yeah, no, I I can see that, man. That's yes. that's pretty intense. And that should should help silver. Now silver's hanging in there around 1650, but this thing is you know in a coma. Yeah. No silver's doubt. in a cold. No, silver's like on life support here. It, it, there's no, there's no pulse in that market. And you know, three years ago we had a really wide seven dollar and change uh, trading range. Two years ago it was like three fifty. This year it's under a dollar seventy five. So we're just having the trading range each year in silver market. Uh, this is like a rubber band. It's going to snap eventually, and it is going to move when it decides to. Um, it's like a wedge pattern, you know, on the charts in the silver market. Yes. You know how those things tend to resolve themselves with a massive move. Totally. Folks, stay right there. Andy, I, I'm going to grab you for another section, okay? Because I got the API numbers, okay? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Uh, you stay right there, folks. Andy and I are going to be coming right back. And, of course, don't forget, Andy's got two great newsletters. He's got the Tech Limit, the Commodity Report. That's his weekly newsletter. He's got Daily Essentials. That's his daily newsletter. You can come right over to TFNN. Go to newsletters. Go to daily or 
um, you go to trading. If you're trading, you're going to see the daily essentials. Investing, you're going to see the Technometric Commodity Report. Both come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Andy and I are going to be coming right back. We're going to be talking about the oil numbers. Uh, let's see. Crude stockpiles dropped 2 million barrels last week. But we'll get you the rest of these numbers, folks. Come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Talking with our man, Mr. Andy Heck. We are talking markets. Uh, right now, we're going to be talking oil. We just got the uh, EPI numbers. So uh, we have cushion uh, down 1 million barrels. Gasoline was up 3.7 million barrels. Distilts was down uh, 871,000 barrels. And, you know... What do you think? So that's not much. I mean, so down 2 million in crude oil stocks, up 3.7 million in gasoline, which we should expect because we are in the driving season and refineries are churning out the gasoline, and down 871,000 in distillates. Um, yep. Man, not a surprise. Uh, basically, it's kind of like an overall build of around a million barrels here. Uh, I don't think the market's going to move yeah. higher or lower on it's this. It's not moving uh, it, issue. right. Not right. moving it. Listen, uh, uh, John, John in Philly is asking, in spite of the Saudi and Russia talking increased oil, can I envision Brent rallying back to a high of 80, 50 or above? I absolutely can. Um, you know, it, the bottom line here is oil has to hold 62.58 here. Um, 
All of the things that drove the price of oil higher over recent months are still in place. You have very strong crack spreads. You have uh, Brent rallying versus WTI. The situation in the Middle East continues to be uh, potentially uh, turmoil. Um, and you have growth in the U.S., economic growth in China, and demand for crude oil going up. So the bottom line here is that we're in a corrective phase here. Uh, I don't expect this correction to, to, I think we're close to a bottom of this correction. Time will tell. It's very hard at this point, Tom, because we made a new low today. It's still kind of a foil, falling knife, and we know that crude oil can move big uh, up or down. It tends to take the elevator shaft down. Uh, but, you know, right now, I think we're going to hold 62.58, and I think we're going to go into a sideways period in the crude oil market, and then we're going to start getting active again around the OPEC meeting, which is uh, June 22nd. Yeah, I mean, listen, everyone's happy with oil at $60 to $70, right? Right. <laughs> That's big and numbers. And by the way, COP is telling me that oil is not going down that much. Yeah, this copper move, man. I'm digging that. That's a is, that's a is, that's a move, man. This is really important. Remember, copper is the um, is is the doctor. It diagnoses yep. the global economy, and copper tends to move. Um, uh, you know, it tend, at times it moves first, and this is definitely bucking the trend in a lot of other commodities. We'll see if it gives it back tomorrow or the next day, but right now. Uh, you know, let, let's just put a chart up here. We are trading at the highest level in copper since, let's see, we made a new high. Um, let's see, we're at 321. Where do we get up to today? We got up to 325. So the resistance is up at 327.20. That's the February 12th highs. And then we got to go all the way back to last December, 332.20. We're within 7.2 cents of that. I mean, that considering we were at three bucks uh, last week, three oh one, this is a hell of a move. It's a, and not only that, you know, you go like to Seiko Mines, and this the stock, folks, is all about copper. And this is this the stock is get killed. It's a personality stock. This is what happens to it anyway. Last six months, it went down from a price point of two two dollars and thirty cents, hit a low of uh, a buck. Bottom line, this thing went up ten percent today. Uh, 13 cents, you're at a buck 22, and it has the volume behind the move. SCCO, which that's is the one largest. I was going to ask you about. Oh, that's, that's, that's the baby. That's the yeah. baby, man. That's Southern Copper, a buck 64. This is already, it already hit all time highs, folks. This looks yes. to me uh, like this is going to take off like a rocket ship again. So big number, man. Yeah, big number. It's a big number in copper. And really, copper has got the spotlight in the commodities market today. Everything else is pretty mellow. Not copper. I'll take it. Okay, yeah. we're going to give you a break. You're going to be uh, growling and prowling another 15 minutes for another hour. Thank you so okay. much, man. Thanks, Tom. Okay, have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Much. Let's go to Jose and Brandon. Jose, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. Um, when it comes to gold, I think Mo of the Three Stooges said it best. It's going no place fast. I know. When is New Newmont going to move? It's so true, man. That's this well, so I mean, true. Let, let's do a house call. Put your stethoscope on and do a house call on the sick patient, Newmont. So, Newmont, really flat out here today, up 30 cents, but flat. Um, we need volume, man. You know, um, you know. yesterday you got down to that uh, 38.15. Now, there's some decent support there. It was going against the 9th of April. That's 5.9 million shares. You did 3.3. Bottom line, though, you can see we only went up on three today. You know, so what you want to see, 38.67. Okay. So the low of May 1st, we want to see that get inside there. Now, granted, it's only 16 cents, but guess what? We want it inside there because once you get inside there, well, then you get some action. Okay, um, Tom, Tom the, the June 13th Fed move, 25, it's a fait accompli, it's going to happen. But what the Fed says during their statement that no more rates for the rest of the, uh, hikes for the rest of the year, doesn't gold breathe a sigh of relief? Yes, huge. Okay. Huge. And the, well, Tom, the biggest thing right here for tomorrow would be this. The dollar index failed today. The dollar index went into the lows of its high. Right, 20,000 yeah. versus 37, gave it up. If this dollar index comes down 400 ticks tomorrow, we will see gold move. Big time, okay, too. Okay, shouldn't it have happened today? 
kind of no, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, because what it had to do today is it had to go test the high first, which it did. It tested the low of the high. Okay, Tom, can yeah. you indulge me on a trading scenario, a, a hypothetical? A Apple Computer reports earnings at 4:30 today. At 3:55, I bought 10 call options three months out. At the 150 strike price, where the stock closed. Stocks at 150, earnings come out at 430. I also, at the same time, bought 10 puts. Same strike, same expiration date. Okay. The stock gaps opened up 10 points tomorrow. That eight, okay, there's parity in the market, of course, so I paid $8 on each side. $16,000 total. 8000 okay. up, 8000 down. Okay. Stock gaps, stock gaps up tomorrow, good earnings as usual. Okay, what is my call option worth? It's not worth $8 anymore. You've got to add 10 bucks on it. It's 18 to $20. You can exit the t both sides of the trade. You invested 16000 on the total trade, 8000 yeah. up, 8 down. Now your option is worth 18 to 20 You exit the call, and you still have time premium on the put. You're taking off the table uh, 19 about twenty thousand, uh, between twenty-two and twenty-three thousand dollars, and you put up sixteen. What is wrong with that? So there's nothing wrong with it if, if it moved that way. What would happen is this: is that ten minutes before the call, you know, meaning the, the earnings play, right? Is that your premiums on both of them are going to be higher? And so what would happen is that that you'd have a crush on okay. the volatility. That, you yeah. know, but I, I know what you're saying, man. I mean, the bottom line is if you had the big movement, yeah, yeah. And what being three months out, if you did have a gap high, well, guess what? Maybe the gap can get filled. It would be the, it'd be uh, as to how much premium you would be paying yeah. for each one of those, because we know you'll get the crush the following as soon as the news is out. Right, that's true. The, they got to be high beta stock and move, but look at Google, yeah. Facebook, and Amazon, the rest of them. Right. Uh, Cooking, brother. I know. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We ended our industrials. Finished down 13. NASDAQ up 31. S&P's up 5.5. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today.
with over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So uh, let's go back over. I want to go back over to that uh, copper contract for a second because what you're going to see, uh, this thing moved with conviction, folks. And this is a big number because what we also have uh, inside this contract, it looks to me like you basically HG1. I'm going to put this on a continuous contract. I got to see this. Okay, so, yeah, it's a nice setup. Okay, so your A point on this, this is just a monster. It could be 193. We're talking, you know, you get uh, 150, which you get your 450. Interesting, man. We're going to the highs. Yeah, so the smaller one can get you at a 480. Um, no, well, that would be a larger one. But bottom line is that this thing wants to go to its highs. And what you already have done here, now so check this out. This is what's really cool. When, and this is, these always take a long period of time, but you, what you're going to see is that we had broken the downtrend November of 2016. These, these, when you have a long period of time like this, it's great. We had a wide price spread. We broke the downtrend. Copper went from 219 to 274. That's saying it wants to go to 450. Now what we've done, bottom line, you get another huge sign of strength. And if we go and we take a look at this now, what you're seeing is that we, this is saying it's going to 332. We bring this back as we get closer and closer. It's like, okay, uh, you get 332 is game. And bottom line is, if we break that number there, you, you are off to the races, and you're off to the races in a, in a very large way. And what we did do is that the first run before SC, SCCO actually had backed down, uh, SCCO was one of the uh, best uh, commodity stocks, uh, even in, including oil. I mean, the oil stocks didn't move that much. But you see, SCCO... Uh, that went from a price point in September of 2016 to 25 to 51. Pretty wild. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. Whatever you want, my folks. Step into it. Visualize it. Have a great time with it. Look forward to speaking right back here tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Go get them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.